Welcome to ATP Customs. Well, today we got a special treat for you. We have a CX Racing twin turbo kit with intercooler for a Fox body Mustang. And we're going to do a full evaluation of the quality of this kit. I have my friend here, Mr. James Collins. James is a Red Seal A-level welder from BC. He has multiple CWBs and pressure tickets as well as a former instructor at Okanagan College in the welding department. He's worked in the oil field and pulp mills and has worked on over $750 million in jobs. And Jim is who I trust completely when it comes to this kind of stuff. Now this kit we ordered for our 93 F-150 we're building for the guys over at Total Hardcore Canadian Customs. And we wanted to go just an entry level kit instead of spending seven or $8,000 on a twin turbo kit. I read a bunch of reviews on forums. A lot of guys were saying their quality has improved. And uh, we're gonna let Jim run wild on these products and give you a true evaluation on what he sees on all of these welds and quality of their parts. So welcome, Jim. Hey, everybody. Um, well, I'd like to get started. Usually I like to find something that I like about what's going on. And from what I can tell from the basic, uh, we haven't done a full mock-up, but. The, the actual layout, the fitting looks pretty decent. Um, some of the welds, you know, when you first look at them, I'm looking for kind of a pink salmon color, which lets me know, um, similar what's into here a little bit, um, lets me know that the stainless was welded at the right temperature. Stainless steel is very vulnerable to too much heat. When you get too much heat into the weld, it'll actually cause it to rust. So if we look up here at the next weld, you're gonna start seeing some blackening in there and things like that. We've got some funny colors. Um, we've got pin pricks in here. So this is telling me it was welded too hot, um, quite sloppily, to be honest. Right here, this is all gonna rust right out. Um, so, you know, back when I was teaching, if a student brought me a weld like this, there's stuff in it that I like, but there's a whole bunch of bad cold lap, lack of fusion, pinholes, this would be a fail. This would not pass a visual <laughs> inspection. I wouldn't even go to a bend test. You're going to find that all over here. They've got missed areas, bad fit up. They blew holes. So this is starting to cause some concern for me because this is actually a relatively simple piece to fit up. When I go and look at where they did their flanges here, I'll get in the light. You're going to see that the weld is very flat and into the heavy side and not much into this side. There was no filler rod used this is going to crack out when it gets hot and vibrates it's really thin right there maybe maybe a millimeter thick <laughs> if you're lucky so this was kind of a rush job you know I'm looking at the fitting here this isn't too bad but when you kind of see it from the side profile it's carved right into the fitting again and too much heat so you're gonna get rusting there this is going to crack out over time the, the whole point of using stainless steel is so that you're not gonna get any rusting. When you weld stainless steel too hot, you get what's called carbide precipitation, which you really can see in these areas, all in through here, um, and it just gets uglier. I don't know if you can get that in the camera, this area in here, but this was some of it was welded from the inside before the fittings were put on. But you can see all of this is going to rust. There's a crack right there already. And then as I get into this and I start looking around, um, you know, again, the same problems, lack of fusion. Um, this here is all cold lapped with some undercut. It's going to rust right out. Um, there was one piece in particular I'm looking for that really caused me a lot of concern when I started looking at it. Okay, so right here, the gentleman has dumped his tungsten deep into the workpiece and not completed the weld. This here is from the tungsten touching the puddle and there, there's no real fusion. It's the same as porosity in other forms of welding. You can see down here, cold lap, just big, thick, chunky welds. And then there was a big crack on this piece. I'm just trying to find it. In here, you can see he didn't even weld to the actual piece. It just missed completely. And, you know, in here, more pinholes, lack of welding. You know, I understand that some of this stuff can be difficult to do. 
Um, I wish we could show you the inside. I don't know if you can see into there. Not really, no, a little bit. You can see that it, it there's a lot of um, rust on the inside already. Mm -hmm. And, you know, graying and a lack of fusion. That's from this weld right here. Yeah. And then you can see, well, it's tough coming in right through the fitting. They had a lot of problems in there, which could have been corrected. And then I'm kind of worried about this stuff here. Why weld here in here and just skip the outsides? Mm -hmm. You know, they went and welded it all the way around on the inside. I have concerns that this is even going to fit the motor properly. <laughs> it's hard to say. And when you look at it, it looks pretty straight. But I would like to see this, you know, with a machinist um, straight edge or something like that. We'll see how it goes. And we do have a, a set of 302 heads just kicking around here. We can bolt them to. Yep. So we'll probably do a part two to this video as we're assembling it too. Basically with this, um, I'd like to pressure it up with a water test. It's going to leak from a million places. I'm going to have to cut the whole thing apart and re-weld it. Um, really, this just came down to making poor choices and rushing the job. Um, you can see there's several spots on the stainless and some of the aluminum that we're going to see where they've ground the entire weld off and just re-weld it again. Oh, here's a good example. This is already, if you can see the indie here, this is all rusting out on the inside. Mm -hmm. So this is all going to be blowing into your turbo. And that's really awesome when you're spending so much money on the motor and kit. Now this kit was, I think it was just shy of $2,200 US. By the time it got to Canada, it was around $3,700. Go. So as I was saying, you know, we've got a big patch job here. There's going to rust through. Here we've got undercut and things like that. So between the undercut, the porosity, the lack of fusion, the cold lap, and just the terrible appearance of many of the welds, it gives me great concern about this kit. My recommendation is to cut it all apart and re-weld it. Um, unfortunately, otherwise, I think it's going to leak like a sieve. And uh, how many hours do you think that would take, cutting this entire kit apart and rewelding it? I think it would be at least 15 hours. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be quite complex. And of course, once you start cutting things apart, they need to go back together the same size. So I'm going to have to fit it, gap it, run a root pass, which this gentleman was butting it up and welding it. But when I cut this apart, you know, I lose the thickness of the zip cut. I lose this. And it's absolutely critical to maintain these dimensions that your parts won't fit. Mm -hmm. So minimum 15 hours to repair all of this. All right. Okay, so that covers these parts. We're going to move on to the next box of parts, all the aluminum piping. Uh, I wanted to point out, I love the packaging that they send things in. You get a couple of waste gates, blow off valve, and there was no instructions in the kit. You get all the gaskets, but we're missing uh, at least one of the gaskets. And we're not sure if we're missing an intake pipe. We have to go over it still, but kind of tough to uh, check what's supposed to be in the box when you don't get instructions with a parts list. So we don't actually know 100% if anything's missing yet, but let's move on to the next box. Okay, we're on to the next box of parts. And one of the things, uh, if you haven't been watching our channel, I want to mention is we are putting this kit in a 93F150 and we are using a Holly EFI high intake manifold. So I'll pop a picture up right now. So we are actually, uh, because it's a Fox body kit, it comes in from the side into the intake and the intake we're going with is a front mounted intake. So we're going to have to probably cut this pipe apart let Jim rebuild it so it comes in the uh, front of the motor as opposed to the side take it away Jim where are we at next hey everybody I'd like to talk about the intercooler first um, I'm quite happy with it you know it's, it's always easy to rate someone else's welds when you're not the one doing the work but you've got a high low situation I think everything's tied in really well I don't see any cold lap or undercut um, this white stuff that you see along the side of the weld, that's normal aluminum oxidization. Aluminum does rust while it oxidizes, but that white oxidized layer 
once it's built up, actually stops any more oxidization. I just have so, to point out the shipping damage there. Yes, the we've got a little it. bit of shipping damage here, but I've gone through the whole thing. The inside is quite clean and front to back. I'm very happy with the looks of these welds. Just on visual, I'm pretty sure this would pass a water pressure test. There's nothing on here that gives me any concern oh. at all. And your guess is another company made this? Yes. Yeah, I, it, yeah, the aluminum versus the stainless steel, it's night and day difference. Someone does this for a living. The stainless steel that we saw earlier um, is not even acceptable from a first year welding <laughs> student. Now over on these, at first glance, I'm pretty happy, but I don't know if you guys can see that high low between the two pipes. That yep, is yep, you can quite see a bit of a difference. So that gave me a little bit of concern. And then I started noticing Makita cap. And that's where you use a grinder, a Makita grinder, to kind of take your high lows off. Um, kind of worried about that. And then I started noticing all the little scratches. And upon further inspection, I realized somebody welded this, did a bad job, and somebody ground the welds off completely and re-welded them. Um, right here, along here, this is really nice looks nice and consistent but if you look inside you'll see it right in there they didn't have full penetration all the way around oh yeah you see a little is. crevice like that this part's going to be on a shaking motor you're going to get that crack building out it's the same thing with this flange welded on really nice to the piece of tubing but when you look on the inside nobody did that inside mm -hmm. that will fill with debris hot gases and various things and as it shakes it will start to cause a crack. So this should be a, should have been welded out. All right. And then, I don't know if you guys can see right down the tube. There we go, yeah. You um, can kind of see where the pipes connect down there. And there's blowouts. It's the same thing with the earlier stainless that we saw. Whenever there's blowouts inside of the pipe, I become quite concerned because these things can come apart <coughs> and then it gets into your motor, your turbo, and any other thing like that. So, you know, that engine is your baby. All you right. Make sure you take good care of it. You also get a whole bag of clamps and V-band clamps. We get a bracket, which I'm not sure where the bracket goes since we have no instructions, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. And as well, you get lots of bolts and uh, hoses and lines and all the little uh, connectors which isn't really the important part of this kit we're evaluating today. I really just wanted Jim to give us an expert opinion on the piping and how this kit was actually assembled. So I think that's good for today. The next video on this kit will be what we're doing with it. We have been talking to the company. They, uh, you can actually reach this company. They will respond. Took a couple of days, but they are uh, actually responding to us through email about our opinion of this and whether we're happy with it or not. We will let you know how it goes. Next is uh, mock it up and see how it fits and then probably let Jim just tear this whole thing apart. One last thing I'd like <coughs> to add, um, if you have any questions about welding or you'd like to see some welding videos from ATP Customs in regards to things like this or doing floor pans and things like that, just leave some uh, comments down below and we'll go from there. Absolutely. And uh, let's not forget you get these, these really classy CX racing decals which uh, I don't think we're going to use. I think by the time uh, Jim's done with that, it should have ATP decals on it. But there you go. An actual review on CX Racing Twin Turbo Kit that I've always wanted to know about. I've looked them up online for years and always wanted to try one. And now we have one, and that's what you get. <laughs> so moving on. We'll uh, be back on this one shortly. Thank you for watching, and I hope you subscribe.